I am breaking my rule today of putting my bare ass feet on the internet. Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today, we are talking about your feet. Today, I wanna to talk about your feet and how they can influence how your body feels and functions. We will briefly discuss why foot health is so important, and then I'll give you a few actionable steps to improve it. So let's start simply with why are your feet important? So it's actually pretty simple if you think about it. Humans have evolved to stand on two feet. So you have two things holding up your entire body weight. They ideally need to be strong, mobile, and stable. If your feet can't adequately support your body weight, it can lead to all sorts of issues. Foot pain, hip pain, ankle pain, knee pain, really any breakdown of strength or range of motion in a joint can cause pain somewhere else along the chain. Now, luckily there are a lot of easy actionable steps you can take to improve your foot health and reduce your risk of pain and injury. So let's jump on into them. So the first thing you can do is adjust your footwear. There are unfortunately a few big issues with modern footwear today. One thing is a narrow toe bed. So having a narrow toe bed is going to squish the toes to Together, which is gonna lead to lack of function in the individual toes. It can potentially lead to bunions and it's going to reduce your ability to extend the big toe, which is vital for walking, running, pivoting, pretty much everything we do. Another issue you see a lot is this over-reliance on arch support. And hear me out, like arch support or like very cushioned shoes, they have a time and place. If I'm running, I probably want a little bit more support. But if I'm strength training, I'm gonna wanna have a little bit more connection to the floor. And far too often I see people over rely on their orthopedics rather than actually trying to get to the root of the issue, which often is a strength problem. Now, obviously, I don't know everyone's medical history and some people probably need orthopedics, I don't know, every time they're walking around. If that's you, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> but I see it time and time again, people with foot issues, whether it's plantar fasciitis, whether it's bursitis, whether it's flat feet, they are prescribed some type of orthopedic, which creates a false arch, but they're never given any exercises to help strengthen the foot and correct the issues. Why slap a Band-Aid on the problem for the rest of your life when you could use the Band-Aid for a little bit of assistance, but then work on the actual issue underneath so you don't need the Band-Aid anymore? This is honestly just something I will never understand. So anyway, what can we do about it? I'm not gonna tell you to like ditch all of your narrow toed shoes. Like that's, that's a little insane, but you can spend less time in them. When you're at home, take your shoes off, get grounded on the floor. During your workouts, do it barefoot, or you can get a flat lifting shoe. Kevin for Christmas got me a pair. They are the Vivo barefoot. I'll, you know, put some fancy B-roll up on the screen here. And those are great because the toe bed is nice and wide. It's a flat sole. And my gym gets cranky when I take my shoes off and lift in socks. So it's like the next best thing. But if you can do your strength training in socks or barefoot, that is going to be the best option. Remember that your feet have dozens of little muscles in them and if you are just shoving them in shoes all the time with a ton of support you're not going to really use them and if you don't use it you'll lose it. So the other big recommendation I have is to exercise your feet. You don't need like a foot day in your workout split, but this is just something you can do a few times a week. It takes five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna show you two different drills you can work on. Get ready for the free foot picks, you freaks. All right, so the first thing we're looking at here are just some arch lifts. So I'm focusing on lifting up my arch. I like to think like I'm squeezing sand between my heels and my toes. And this is just a great way to activate those little intrinsic foot muscles underneath the arch and help prevent that collapse over time. So next thing we're trying to do here is just spreading and relaxing the toes. If you believe in evolution, we used to crawl on our hands and our feet. But now that we only rely on our hands to reach for things and grab things, a lot of times we lose that mobility through the feet. So we do ideally wanna be able to separate all 10 toes and relax them. Next drill you can try is just lifting up all 10 toes and placing them down. The goal here is to keep the ball of the foot down and resist rocking back onto the heels. So we don't want any weight shift. We simply wanna isolate all 10 toes and then place them back down. Next drill, this is where I start to really uh, not be good at this. You're just gonna practice picking up the big toes. So you can see that I have a really hard time, especially with my pinkies, keeping them down. My feet are weird, if you could not tell. But I'm just practicing lifting up the big toe and placing it down. And now we're gonna reverse it. So big toes down, all four outside toes down. Every single time I'm really trying to isolate. Again, I'm not very good at this. I'm working on it. I know that my feet are not too great. But again, we're really just trying to isolate because we have a lot of these little intrinsic foot muscles that do start to lose strength over time. Then the next thing we're gonna do is pull up all 10 toes and go from inside out. Again, this is definitely a trickier drill, but with practice, you will get better at it. And then we can reverse it, pulling all 10 toes up and coming from the outside 
and back in. I'm a little bit better at this one. So that is just some basic foot mobility, right? We're just getting everything moving. You could take one or two minutes a day and just do this. The next thing we're gonna look at is some big toe extension work. So this is when your big toe has to pull up like this. Again, this is very important in walking, running, pivoting, any type of sport. If you dance and you need to go on releve, like you do need that big toe extension. But unfortunately, a lot of the shoes that we have are not only so narrow, but also so cushioned. The shoe tends to do the work for us on that push off. So this is a drill called Big Toe Extension Pales Rails. Without getting too deep into this, because I don't want to get into like the nitty gritty of these mobility techniques. Essentially what we're doing is working on strengthening the end ranges of motion. So in the range of motion of a joint, you are typically strongest in the middle of your range of motion. And a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times where we get injured is in our end ranges of motion because we're typically a lot weaker there. So you're going to need either a doorway or I'm using an ottoman for this pressed up against the wall, but just something where you're outside four toes can just kind of hang off the side. So we're basically just pushing that big toe into as much passive extension as possible. You're gonna hold this position ideally for two minutes. If you only have a minute to get into the passive stretch, that's fine. But a lot of studies have shown that hanging out in a passive stretch for two minutes is gonna give the central nervous system a lot more time to relax into the stretch and make sure that your body feels safe in it. So after you spend about one or two minutes here, we're gonna do our pales rails contractions. So the first thing we're gonna do is try and get out out of the movement. So we're gonna try and push our big toe through the doorway or through the ottoman or whatever you're pushing on. So this is going to strengthen the progressive tissue. You're gonna hold this contraction for about 10 to 20 seconds. And then after that, you're gonna try and pull the toe up off of the ottoman without lifting your other toes. So we're trying to isolate the big toe and now we're working on the regressive tissue. Again, basically we're strengthening the two end ranges of motion so that we help prevent injury. Remember that mobility is simply strong strength through our full range of motion and those end ranges are included. If you wanna know more about mobility in general, I have a whole video where I assessed my mobility and then coming up soon, I do have a follow-up video with more of these techniques showing how I've worked to improve my mobility in the new year. So in my opinion, the big lesson here is this. If a basic movement pattern causes you pain and a healthcare professional tells you to simply omit doing that movement forever, that is inadequate treatment. For instance, if squatting causes you knee pain and you stop squatting, like yeah, your, your knee pain is probably going to go away. But how about we figure out why squatting, which is a basic daily function that we have to do, it's sitting and standing. Why don't we figure out why that causes you pain? Do you have poor internal hip rotation? Do you lack ankle mobility? And as always, I already said in this video, if you have something very specific going on to you where you literally cannot bend and extend your knees, this, it, I'm not, this isn't about you. <laughs> I also wanna make it clear, by squat, I don't mean like barbell back squatting 300 pounds. I mean bend and extend at the knees and the hips, weighted or unweighted. And this same concept applies to your feet. If you go to a physical therapist with foot pain and their only solution is to give you a glorified pillow as a shoe, I am thinking long-term here. If you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s and your knees hurt so you can't squat, your feet hurt so you need clouds on your feet at all times, your shoulders hurt so you can't reach overhead with any weight, how do you think you're gonna function when you're 70? You're gonna be really dependent on other people to do very basic things. Getting up off of the toilet, going for a walk, putting the dishes away. Work on these things now so you have a better quality of life later, so you can retain your independence as long as possible. That's the lesson here. Let me know if if you have any questions down below, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you all in the next one.